So today I was asked, how does the FIGAF tool stack up against SAP's standard cloud integration transport tool? And I had a look at it and I saw it, it was really nice. It had some nice features, the, the standard transport tool. Uh, you could create a transport directly from CPI tenant uh, and then you had different options of people could approve it and you could then import it into test and production later. I do think that the FIGAF tool have a number of, of advantages still over this, uh, simply b because it just makes the process so much simpler and you get much better documentation about what is going on with it. For instance, in the uh, standard logs, you can only see that a given iFlow has been transported, not this particular version. And the only reason to know what the change is, is if it is in the text. And later, you it's really difficult to actually see when something was implemented or imported for a specific reason. That's why I think the FIGAF tool will offer you a number of advantages when you are trying to simplify the process of delivering SAP integration. Obviously, I encourage you to, to check out the uh, SAP standard tool, but I also would encourage you to see how well the FIGAF tool will simplify your process because I think it can make it a lot easier for you to manage the SAP integration. First off, um, in the FIGAF tool, we are versioning all CPI objects that gives us an ability to actually compare artifacts and see what has been changed for a given reason. We have a number of different options to view it. We can view here, uh, we can see that there was a change in this artifact. We can see precisely what was changed here. So this was the draft was changed to new version and we can see if there was layout changes or other components that were changed as a part of this. We also have some different versions of our comparison. We have a diff to HTML that gives us an idea about what has changed between these two versions. So we can see some API keys has been changed. We can see some BPM model diagram that has been changed. And that's a lot easier to view in the graphical monitor. And lately we can see if there's any groovy changes, XSLTs, whatever changes that is important and see if they have an impact on us. For instance, hard coding a bank account would not really be useful. Okay, so now I've made a change for this. Um, the full thing about processing a transport in the VF tool gives you a lot more flexibility about governing this. So the thing is, I will add this to a ticket for a specific reason. I would select which landscapes I want to transport this on. And I have one out here. I can specify which Jira number this is supposed to. So it's just a, a link to that Jira number, which contains the reason why we're actually doing this in the first place and a description. What we can then do is we can obviously add, add all the dependent objects that's a part of this, uh, which is both the package and the test case. If we want to look at it, we can look at all the different test cases that we have created for this iFlow. Generally, you obviously want to add all the, the different artifacts that's a part of this that you have test case on because you want to make sure that the iFlow works the same way always. And then you can specify where you want to run it in the landscape. And then it's actually working like the standard FIGAF testing tool that will take these messages, send it then in via the, the trace uh, capability, download the payload, and then we can actually see the results. And obviously this could take a little while. So now we got the results from this test and obviously it's not really encouraging that everything is failing, but obviously there is some systematic changes. There was a new value that had been added. Uh, we could obviously see if there were differences in our XML documents and stuff like that. And then we'll go through, compare all of this. Once we have accepted it all, we'll say, okay, now next time this is our expected test case. And that means we can always make sure we have test result that matches what we want to achieve. So now I've tested my change 
and I'm so, so satisfied with it, I can then start the transport. So this is all about connecting your test cases with your transport. And we can see we are transporting the package. We can see, and here we have the same option of compare the artifacts with the different artifacts we have in place. And we can see what is different between the two versions uh, that we already have in place, etc. So this gives us a lot of options to actually see what is going on. We also have the ability to here to configure uh, artifacts across the landscape. Um, so we can specify here, for instance, the API key, what it is in our uh, QA system. Uh, we also have ability to hard code uh, host names translations in the landscape that will just apply these artifacts. And we can see that there's actually a warning here with the password does, does not exist. So we can send it here and send it to approval. So, and I, in this case, I'm also able to approve it. In generally, you do not want developers or architects to approve their own code if you want to follow SOX governance. Uh, but for testing and uh, documentation, it's a little easier uh, for this. So now I'm an architect, I can prove this. Uh, and then I can actually import this to my productive system, making it a lot easier uh, for us to handle. And this will then make sure we link all the, the relevant artifacts together. And we're good. We can see there's the warning. This is just a user credential that we can go in and, and fix. So now we have imported it into production. We can then set our ticket to resolve. We could also open if there were defects or anything like that we needed to resolve in it. We can generate a report that states what we have done as a part of this change. So let me just open this. So here we can see the, the artifact. We can see our Jira ID. We can open, see all the artifacts on the different systems that have been created as a part of this. We can look at which kind of test cases we have run on this and the report of these runs. And obviously not, not successful. We would run it again to make sure that we did not get any errors here. So it's just this alert here. And lately we can see the transport that has been processed and who approved them and when, which gives us a much better flexibility to understand what's going on. The idea is then you can take this uh, ticket report and upload it into your Jara uh, service now or whatever systems that you're using to manage the transports. Um, so that was a little on what, how the FreeGov tool make it a lot easier for you to view and manage transports. Last part here is just if you're then looking at any kind of system, uh, for instance, your QA system, you would actually be able to see for any objects what were the relevant tickets that led to these things? Go back to the ticket, find the, the ticket, the reason for this change, and thus, thus give you a lot better understanding about what's going on in your landscape, who made changes. Uh, so you are fully SOX compliant with all the artifacts. I hope this is helpful. If you want to learn more, go to figuff.com forward slash DevOps and try out the tool and see how easy it is you can actually govern your SAP integration. Thank you.